Hey, I'm Brad Rose, and in this video, I'm going to share my ideas on how to write a comic book script starting right now. But real quick, if you want to see more comic book videos with advice and inspiration for your own work, hit that subscribe button and don't miss out. So you want to know how you should begin writing your comic book script? Well, I'm about to tell you exactly how I do it and other great ways you too can write yours to help with your comic book progress. Now, say you've just started working on your comic. It's very important that before you jump straight into script writing, that you know yourself what this story is going to be. This includes the setting, the characters and the theme, like is your story a fantasy, a drama or even a horror story? If you know exactly what your story is all about, that's great. The next thing you want to work on is a summary for the entire thing. To make things as simple as possible, the summary is what happens in your story, and I don't just mean the first chapter or issue, but the entire thing. How does your story start? How does it end? These are the things you want to establish before you even think about scripts. Every time I begin working on a new comic book story, the one thing I do before most other things is figure out how that story will end. The reason I do this, and most likely the reason you should too, is it gives you a sense of direction with your story, so when you're writing scripts and progressing through the chapters, you're basically working towards your established end point, knowing where you're going. So let's say you've got your story, you complete the summary and know the start, the middle and the end. What do you do next? That's when script writing comes into play. The moment you've noted down every idea and plot point your comic book will take on its big journey towards completion, that's when writing scripts basically begins. So getting into script writing, how should you start? Well let's break down each individual page of your comic book for a second. Say a comic has 22 pages for example. Each page is basically an individual segment or scene that pieces your story together. What you want to do though is plan out the summary of your comic book. Begin by noting down everything you want to happen in this specific issue of your comic, like who's been introduced or where the characters will end up by the last page. This will just give you clear thoughts on the main story, so you won't be stuck in a situation where you don't know where the book's story is going to go. Now for planning out each page, something you can do which is completely optional is sketch out the entire page you're working on and include panel sizes you want, where the characters are positioned and so on. This is a great help for spotting anything that might not work, or any mistakes you would have made while finalising the artwork. But if you don't do the artwork yourself and say you're just the writer of this comic book, you should still do some sketches of roughly how each panel should look, and include additional notes, like what the facial expressions and characters are, and other things. The more specific your notes are, the better your artist will understand your vision for the final result. And side note, don't worry about your artwork if you're the writer. The rough sketches should give just the basics of how each panel and scene will look as a finalised piece. It's just something to help artists see the bigger picture more clearly. So back to planning out pages. When you go to illustrate each panel, something you shouldn't do with the artwork is draw over it with text bubbles. Only if it's a draft copy or anything that's not being used for the final piece. The main reason as to why is you want each piece of your artwork to be 100% and not have anything drawn onto it that shouldn't really be there. When I create my panel artworks, I scan in the final sketch, digitalise it, then make a second version that includes a speech bubble and any dialogue that's spoken in that scene. It's better this way, mainly because you'll end up with two versions, one being the full art piece which is nice to have just for showcasing or any other reasons, and the other including the speech bubbles for the final product. When you're coming up with the dialogue that's being spoken, you can easily note them down underneath each panel and include the name of who's speaking them. I personally do this myself for every panel, as it gives me a draft version of each speech that I can improve upon when I'm up to typing them out. The layout of each of your comics pages can be created in many different ways. For example, if you wanted to make a page with lots of dialogue and conversations, you could use a lot of panels, and for something like scenery, you'd use fewer. There are all different types of panels to use too. These can be in all different sizes that capture things in different ways. One example would be a panel that stretches across the entire page from left to right. Here's one from my published comic Faith to give you an idea. These specific panels are great for containing a lot of scenery and characters, and make it easier to do so for any artist. Another panel size is one that covers pretty much the entire page. It's really good for capturing maximum details in the artwork, and works best for a scene that surprises readers and raises tension. A death scene would be a great example for this. So once you've decided on how many panels you want to use in each page, next comes the dialogue. When you want a character to speak in a scene, it's a good idea that the length of the dialogue you've chosen doesn't go overboard. Using too many words in a single panel can end up making the speech bubble look messy, or the words will appear too small to read. 
A good idea for this is to keep the amount of words you use in each speech bubble within the 20s or lower. But say it's an important scene where a lot of dialogue needs to come out, say for a great heroic speech, using more than one speech bubble but lining them together is a good way of making this work out. If you're wondering what font you should use, there are plenty of unique ones to choose from. I personally use the standard Comic Sans font that's had the bold option applied, but some others to think about are Crime Fighter, Anime Ace and Fanboy Hardcore. If you have any questions you'd like answering about your comic book, feel free to drop a comment down below and either myself or someone else will do our very best to help you out with any advice you may need. Or you can reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram for any further help you may require for your comic book. On the other hand, if you're looking for more inspiration and ideas for your comic book, then check out the videos on your screen now.